All amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. And Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has reiterated that his government will not bring in any dramatic measures to save energy this winter in Spain. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee or through the new Super Thanks option. Many thanks for that. Thank Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has once again said that his government will not do anything dramatic when it comes to saving energy in Spain this winter. As we can read here, Sánchez says no dramatic energy saving measures will be taken. The head of the Spanish government, Pedro Sánchez, wanted to emphasize in his speech in the Senate as part of the debate with Alberto Núñez Fe that he will not take dramatic measures to guarantee energy savings. He assures that the measures that will be proposed in the near future will not erode the quality of life of citizens in Spain. He stressed this in his first speech on Tuesday. Sanchez said that the government is already studying additional measures to achieve the desired energy savings demanded by Brussels and to improve efficiency. He pointed out that it is possible to make changes in living habits. There will be neither electricity blackouts nor rationing of butane gas bottles, the PM stated. So, there we go, Prime Minister Sanchez reassuring Spaniards that there won't be any blackouts this winter and there won't be any rationing of gas bottles. So let's see if Mr Sanchez is able to keep his word because as we know, he sometimes struggles with this. Now there's a serious debate going on in Spain at the moment about whether or not there needs to be a price cap on basic foodstuffs. As we can read here, Diaz insists on capping the price of basic foodstuffs despite not finding support in the PSOE and Podemos. It's totally legal, she says. The second vice president of the government, Yolanda Díaz, has insisted on her proposal to cap the prices of basic products in the shopping basket, such as milk or bread, despite the fact that she is not finding support among the PSOE or Podemos. Díaz insists, in the face of the socialists' doubts, that it is a totally legal proposal and has justified it by saying that products such as lettuce or potato Potatoes have risen by between 500 and over 800 percent due to inflation. Diaz was asked whether the government is studying this measure at the press conference following the Council of Ministers, where she appeared together with the minister spokesperson Isabel Rodriguez. Rodriguez was very clear on Monday when she said in an interview on television station Cuatro that we are in a free market and that the government's measures to combat inflation go in another direction. So Ms. Diaz struggling to find support from her colleagues on her proposal to put a price cap on basic foodstuffs, for example, bread and milk. And the reason her colleagues don't seem to agree with her is because, as we saw there, we're in a free market. Now, as we know, severe drought is affecting many parts of Spain at the moment, for example, the north of the country, Galicia, and also the south of the country, Andalusia. And water reserves in one national park in the south, Doniana National Park, have dried up completely. The last wetland to survive the tremendous drought that is ravaging Doniana National Park in southern Spain has disappeared this week. The protected area one of the country's most important natural reserves, declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO, no longer has its own natural fresh water. The Santa Olaya Lagoon, the largest of the permanent bodies of water, which quenches the thirst of thousands of migratory birds and mammals, has dried up, leaving the rest of the wetlands dry. It is one of the many ravages caused by the lack of rain, which has harmed hundreds of species of fauna and vegetation, some of which may disappear. So some sad news when it comes to the state of Doniana National Park down there in Spain's Andalusia region, with the last permanent body of water there drying up. Now, the nuclear energy debate continues to rage here in Spain. As we know, some political parties are against nuclear energy. Some political parties are for nuclear energy. And as we can read here, Spain will have nuclear power until 2035. There are no companies interested in a new reactor. After lowering VAT on gas to 5% and fixing the problem of cogeneration in industry at the last minute, 
debate, the last pending variable in the energy debate between the PSOE and PP was nuclear power. In Spain, where seven reactors are currently operating, the timetable for the planned closure of these facilities does not generate urgency to make decisions. The process of the first of the disconnections will not begin until 2025. Pedro Sánchez has reiterated that there are no changes on this front. This government has no intention of extending the useful life of these plants. I don't think it will be necessary, assured the president in his debate with Alberto Núñez Feijó this Tuesday in the Senate. The PP's proposed is to rethink this idea. Spain is the only one of the 13 countries with nuclear plants in Europe that has not reconsidered its closure plans, the PP leader replied. So nuclear power yes or nuclear power no? That's the question and the debate that Spanish politicians are currently having. What's your opinion on the matter? Do you think nuclear power is the solution or is it something that should be phased out? Let us know in the comment section below. And the final piece of news today, some good news when it comes to air travel here in Spain, and it is that air travel in Spain has recovered to 93%. Spanish airports have managed to recover to 93% of the flights they operated before the pandemic, according to Eurocontrol data between the 1st of June and the 4th of September. During the confinement, only 1 in 20 connections were operated. Among the main European markets, Spain is the second where the recovery has been the strongest. 5,168 daily flights last week, for example, after Italy and ahead of France, Germany and the UK, where activity is still 20% below 2019. Spain continues to perform better than most countries, helped by the recovery of connectivity in one of the main tourist destinations and by the confidence of Europeans to go on holiday again. So Spanish airports again busy places and almost back to pre-pandemic flight levels. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Debbie, good for the homeowner. If the authorities won't do anything, then what's your options? Apparently these squatters haven't missed any meals either. Yeah, Debbie, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to a story that we saw in yesterday's live stream about how a man in Murcia got together with a couple of his mates, armed themselves with baseball bats and decided to evict squatters that had moved into one of his homes. He decided to take the law into his own hands and it has now come to light that he may be charged with aggression for trying to get those squatters out. He claims that there was no violence involved, only the use of bad language, but authorities may see it in a different light. Because let's be honest, confronting anybody with a baseball bat could be seen as aggression. The comment section yesterday was divided over this story. Some people in favour of what the man did, some people against his actions. So we'll see what happens when this case goes through the courts and it'll be interesting to see how the judge rules. One here from Brad. Well, considering the bulk of Spain's national income comes from tourism, that's a pretty ridiculous thing to wish for. As a side note, Barcelona is the last place I'd visit again. One of my least favourite places in Spain and I absolutely love Spain. Yeah, Brad, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to the anti-tourist sentiment that has once again popped up in cities like Barcelona here in Spain. And Barcelona seems to be turning into one of these cities here in Spain that you either love or hate. And replying to the first part of your comment there about the percentage of GDP that comes from tourism here in Spain, you said that it's the bulk. I don't think that is the case. I think it's around 12, 13 or 14 percent of GDP that comes from tourism. So it's handy, but uh, not the bulk in my opinion. But I could be wrong. One here from Sir Roy, nothing to do with energy, everything to do with failing France, fear of Spain becoming more dominant in the EU. Yes, Sir Roy, thanks for the comment and obviously related to a very hot topic here in Spain at the moment, the fact that France is not on board with Spain and Portugal's plans to send gas to Germany through France via a new gas pipeline. We saw the other day that French President Mr Macron is against this idea. Germany's on board, Spain's on board, Portugal's on board, but of course France is not. And uh, unfortunately, this pipeline would have to cross France. I've seen other people mention the theory that you put forward in your comment that France doesn't want a dominant Spain in Europe, but I'm not sure if that is the case or not. Macron seems to be in favour of a more long-term solution, for example renewables, rather than a short-term solution, in his opinion, which is gas. So we'll keep an eye on this story in coming weeks and months. We'll see if the gas pipeline project does indeed get off the ground or whether or not it is dead and buried. 
Time will tell. One here from Bubbly Bull. We're not going to transition if there is no pain. Macron wants Europe to take the hard road. It's going to hurt. But he's right. Necessity is the mother of creativity. And boy, do we need creativity. Yeah, Bubbly Bull, thanks for the comment. And there we go. Somebody coming out in support of Mr. Macron's idea. And you could be right. No energy pain, no energy gain. And Europe does need to become creative when it comes to finding a solution to this problem. And finally, one here from Carol. Why would people coming to visit expect free transportation or free anything? This is being funded out of people's taxes and they shouldn't be expected to pay for tourists. The mind boggles. Yeah, Carol, thanks for the comment. And in reply to another comment that we saw on yesterday's live stream from a person in India, I think it was, who's planning a trip to Spain and wants to know if they will have access to free rail travel when here. As we know, the Spanish government is subsidizing 100% train travel on some routes here in Spain, mainly for commuters, people that travel frequently on these routes, but not necessarily for tourists. There's no doubt that some tourists will be able to take advantage of the free travel, but the majority I don't think will be able to. But I can understand that some people outside Spain are confused about this. It was all over the international press and the headlines clearly read free rail travel in Spain from September on. But of course, those headlines were published before we knew the exact details. And now it's clear who can and who can't take advantage of this free rail travel. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.